I'm Trent McGee. I'm the marketing manager for Center Force Clutches, and we're here with uh, Night Rancher. I'm super excited to have you guys here. Took a look at what you had here, you know, because we weren't entirely certain what combination you were using. Fairly standard stuff, but we've got a couple of upgrade options here. This would be the stock replacement. You have a 11-inch uh, pressure plate with a 10 and a half inch disc, so the disc is a little bit smaller than what the pressure plate can handle. This would be basically the direct replacement. Roughly going to say 450 to 500 horsepower max. One of the options that we could do to upgrade you to get more holding capacity would be to go to an 11 inch. So this is an 11 inch. We're going to say 600, 650, somewhere in there in terms of holding capacity. So a, a pretty good size improvement. But what we're going to do today, we're going to do something a little bit one off and we're actually going to put you into a 12 inch clutch. Uh, this is an upgrade over probably in the neighborhood of 700 to 750 horsepower. So in addition to putting you into a 12 inch clutch, we're also going to step into a dual friction. So it's going to be a little bit different uh, than a traditional clutch. With the Center Force 2, which is what this is, you have a full face friction material on both sides. What we're actually going to do is step into a dual friction. Now this is a segmented material you'll see on, on both sides of the disc. What's going to be a little bit custom about this one is we're going to have a uh, different spline because of the transmission that's being used with this particular application than what we would use with a production version. But honestly, this is all production parts. It's just a unique combination of them. Now, obviously, we are not going to be reusing the original crutch and pressure plate. That's, that's all garbage. We are going to reuse this flywheel, but that means resurfacing it, and that's going to be the first step. Then we'll move on to building the disc. All right, so it's really loud and cold and sparky uh, out where the flywheel is being surfaced, but that's happening right now. So it's, when it gets done there, we're going to go ahead and balance it because we've had to uh, take so much material off of it. And while we're at that, we might as well balance it to the pressure plate as well. It's, all right, so the first step in building the disc is uh, we're gonna have to change out the hub because of the special uh, transmission combination that you're using. So we got Jason here. What we're gonna do is use this uh, template here to helps us line up the rivets and uh, drill out the rivets that hold the existing hub in place so that we can swap it for the new one that matches your transmission. All right, so swapping the hubs and the clutch disc it sounds complicated, but it's really not too bad, especially when you have all the right tools. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna swap out the springs from the original hub into the new hub, and then basically rivet it all together. So what we're putting together right now is a dual friction disc. So basically that's a segmented disc. That's In this case, it's on both sides. So the segmented friction material looks like it might actually wear out quicker, but that's actually not the case. What it does do is it increases the amount of holding capacity within the clutch disc itself. The best way to have I've ever had it explained to me is that imagine somebody standing on your chest in high heels versus a pair of sneakers. Well, the high heels, of course, that amount of that same weight is gonna be a, a very, very concentrated point. Whereas, you know, in sneakers, the, the load is more spread out. The same principle applies to a disc. So by segmenting the disc and reducing the uh, surface area of the friction material itself, we're actually able to increase the holding capacity. So the flywheel ended up actually being pretty messed up. I didn't hear exactly how many thou we took off of it, but it was enough that Mike here felt like it was important to go ahead and have the flywheel balanced. Again, that's not normally something you do, especially if you have a brand new flywheel. But in this case, because we resurfaced it and it's a used wheel, uh, we're gonna go ahead and balance it. And because we need to balance it, we might as well take one extra step. We're actually gonna match balance the pressure plate to the flywheel as well. And that way we know that it'll be a balance unit and it's not gonna vibrate or anything like that. All right, so the last step in the process, and this is pretty much just because this is kind of a custom application. We threw it up in the press here and Jason is checking to make sure that the uh, pressure plate uh, lifts properly and that there's an adequate amount of air gap uh, when you uh, actuate the uh, pressure plate itself. So after that, it's a matter of installing the centrifugal weights on the diaphragm and then squirting some paint on it, put it in the box and it's ready to head out the door.